During this presentation, we will see a brief introduction, methodology of a test that were accomplished to the bricks, the specimens, results, some annexes, in this case, the equations that we used, obviously conclusions and references. In Mexico, adobe mensary is a traditional common building material in rural areas with low economic development and high degree of marginalization. In this case, for example, the disorderly growth of population and the migratory flows generate a problem in the basic services for the integral development of my family. Housing in this case, for example, is one of the human needs of great concern. According to the National Council for Evaluation of Social Development Policy, in this case CONEVAL 2015 in Mexico, the population that have been living in poverty in Mexico was about 55.3 million people. And at this time, the number of people living in extreme poverty has reached the number of 11.4 million people, which in this case, it's equivalent to 40%, 90% respectively, to the total population of Mexico. So as you see, it's important to see that this material has has been used to 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 help people to construct to build their houses where where the resources economical resources are not possible. Adobe housing is traditional type of construction in many developing developing countries. As I said, due to the the materials used in adobe houses are for example soil, straw and water, in this case, for example, for the walls. Uh, some wood is required for the roof system. And all these items that are found in local environment make the construction accessible. In this case, for example, in Mexico, first, the soil is excavated from an, from an area that is near to the place of construction. So, the costs for moving for moving uh, adobe pieces or adobe bricks is not that expensive. Uh, in this case, uh, this soil is combined with water and straw until it gets a uniform and manable mixture that is obtained. And this mixture is placed in wooden molds, as you can see uh, on the picture, in wooden, in wooden molds to create pieces of adobe these are or they have to be they have they have to remain about 30 60 days approximately to dry okay and as i mentioned before transportation of adobe bricks is not expensive that's why they try to make them as close to the construction area as is possible in order to reduce costs for this part of the construction. And they're easy to handle, they're, they're easy to, to manipulate as they get solid when they get dry. So, well, they can be moved easily. Foundation in this case starts between feet 60 to 80 centimeters beneath the surface and continues up to 30 to 40 centimeters above the ground to avoid weathering weathering and of the on the bottom of the adobe walls in this case adobe houses built in mexico are one you are usually one story one story construction uh, the houses have rectangular shaped floors which have an which have average areas of 30 to 50 square meters the longitudinal walls are between 2.4 to 2.7 meters high and the transverse walls are between 3 to 3.9 meters high. The wall thickness in this case is typically 28 to 35 centimeters. So that's why adult houses sometimes they don't usually have um, intermediate intermediate dividing walls 
but they have uh, between one or two access door located on the longi longitudinal walls its dimensions are usually 0 0.7 1 point or 1.2 meters wide and approximately 2 meters high the pieces of adobe are joined with mortar composed with soil water and dried grass from sluggage the joints are approximately 2.5 to 35 centimeters thick so as you can see in the bottom of the second picture the very rear part of the picture you can see the layers of the bricks each one is like glue with this uh, mortar uh, and the structure the roof structure is reinforced with some wooden rafters also known as madrinas or battens and they are uh, used to locate pieces of pieces of the roof in order to avoid well the rain the weather conditions etc main problems that are found using this material are how to carry out the conservation works for historical buildings and the lack of skilled people to produce adobe pieces in this case um, it's a little bit difficult to find people who can restore buildings made of this or built of made of this material and a new growing interest in adobe mensary has been noticed uh, because it's friendly because it's friendly with environment in this case, uh, Laverol Prenorm 2016 uh, has studied the influence of the brick geometry, the aspect radio, and they have test or they have conduced some tests to measure parameters such as dry, density, uh, cement content, moisture content, etc. And at this point, it's important to mention that, as I said, for uh, conservation works in historic, historical buildings, it is not easy to perform destructive tests that, that they are usually used to try to see the mechanical properties of materials, construction materials. And, well, basically for this, for this material, in this case Adobe, we have two kind of tests, destructive tests, which are basically the construction of a pillar, some pillars, they're going to be introduced in the press with some force on it, and the other are the non-destructive test or NDT test, which are basically uh, perform with ultrasonic systems or x-ray systems or um, uh, accelerometers that can measure the force of the impact in in examples that we're going to analyze I mean for example we have the transmitter on one side of the piece and we have the receptor on the other side of the piece so when you hit the piece it produces uh, trans, uh, uh, energy, an energy uh, transference and it can be measured. <coughs> For example, with um, ultrasonic systems, oscillation measurement systems, uh, we can have different types of tests or different, different conditions. For example, we can have the uh, direct measurement, semi-direct measurement, and indirect measurement, where you <coughs> place in different locations or different places the receptor, and obviously it's going to give you different different lectures. But we can we can we can have an average of these values, you know, as you can see in this picture on this picture, which uh, show or explain how these tests are performed. For example, we have the transmitter, 
in many positions. We're gonna place it in many positions, and the receptor <coughs> in some places over here. So we're gonna hit the brick at this point, and then at this point, and then at this point, and we're gonna measure the acceleration, and at the end, well, we're gonna get um, an average value that will tell us the uh, time of flight of ultrasonic waves or acceleration, etc. as I said. For the destructive test, as I said, we have to have pillars with, let's say, three to about 10 pieces of bricks, um, glue with mortar to represent a piece of the normal adobe wall in a construction and then in this case they're going to be exposed to a force directly to them and we're going to see when they they fail in a moment i will tell you the results for this test and we're going to tell you the the results for the non-destructive test and we're going to have a comparison some specimens were tested in the universal machine whose maximum load was about 2,200 kN approximately. In placing transducers on the specimen, it was possible to accurately know the displacement in the direction of each load step and the elasticity model, modules and the poison radio could be calculated as you can see in these pictures. Well, these are the conditions for the um, for the test. In this case, they were according to the Mexican norm for destructive test in order to, to do it as it should be. And with this destructive test, we could calculate or we could estimate the elasticity modules modules uh, in this case as you can see the, the values for each pillar that were test they are very or they are similar in a way for the first pillar we have 230 second pillar 290 the third pillar 275 in this case it has like a peak but then pillar four and five they are 200, so they are closed, except pillar number 8, a value of 317, but the others are very, very much alike. For the non-destructive test, what we did was we used two pieces of different parts of the country, uh, and we placed them with the trans users I mean the transmitter the, re, the transmitter and the receiver connected to the um, ultrasonic wave emitter receiver which is the model 5077PR and uh, we use these pieces of plastic this case acrylic to place the sensors Something important to mention about these sensors is that since they're going to be used to sense ultrasonic waves that they fly between this kind of materials that they're not strong or they're not that hard, transducers with low frequency must be used. In this case, from 50 to 60 kilohertz transducers okay if we were measuring materials as iron um, steel we, we should be using transducers of higher frequencies okay so as you can see in the pictures that's the way we install the device and to make sure that the ultrasonic waves fly through the piece of uh, adobe material we have to add some gel to the to the piece 
in this case ultrasonic gel that is used with the uh, women that, that are in that, uh, that are pregnant and they usually go to the doctor and then they use this this gel for ultrasonic test is the same that we had to use for this test too uh, as you can see here are the dimensions for each specimen or in each example that we use for this test basically we use two examples for this test non-destructive test one was taken from the southeastern part of Mexico and the second one, the biggest one, was taken from a central, a central, part, of, central part of Mexico and as you can see well here you have the dimensions for each one the masses, the volumes and the densities for each one Well, what is important at this, time, at this point is that we measure the time of flight of the uh, ultrasonic waves through the uh, Dolby piece. And well, we have to measure the time of flying and we have to use some equations in order to, to calculate or estimate the elasticity models. But in this case, for example, for this piece, this elasticity models was 221 so it's pretty much close to the one that we have with a destructive test and this one for a biggest for a bigger piece um, it's pretty much the same I mean 227 so they are close and what we did here for this test is that we place um, the sensors in different in different places and we have an average of values of these values uh, and basically that's how we get this number here are as I said the results for the destructive and the non-destructive test for each pieces they are closed here are the annexes if you need to know exactly how exactly we got the uh, Poisson relation or elasticity models um, using these equations. And finally, mechanical properties of Adobe Mensury can be obtained using destructive tests in pillars or cylinders for obtaining elastic models, Poisson radio, and tensile and compressive strength due to the complexity of testing a single break. However, in some cases, destructive tests are not possible to apply for obtaining these properties, as I said, for example, in historical buildings. So this kind of non-destructive test can accomplish a good measurement and give us a good result. The non-destructive test system and the method used in this case of study to estimate the Adobe Mensury Elastic Mechanical Properties show good results compared to the destructive test. In this case, the elasticity models obtained was close to was closed in both methods, and there was um, six percent of difference between both tests, which indicates that both kind of tests are very close. And it should be noticed that both types of brick coming from different parts of Mexico, southeastern and central part of the country, they present approximately the same mechanical properties. Okay. Uh, in this case, this is due to the um, construction method or the construction process that the two pieces had in this case. Finally, you can find the references for this work at the end of this presentation. And uh, we would like to thank to the final support, financial support of the project 